Hey everybody, it's uh, Jesse here from Mountain Pass Performance. Sorry it's been so long since our last video. Uh, been very busy, uh, good busy. And we've also had this plaid here that we've been uh, doing development on for Team PGR. So this car is going to be competing in One Lap of America 2022. It's about four months away and I'd say we're in pretty good shape, um, but we still have more work to do. So today we wanted to show you the new track mode that just got released. I know we're a day or two late, but uh, for whatever reason, we didn't get it right away. So now that we do have it, uh, we're going to show you guys how it works and uh, yeah, just kind of go from there. Some steering, customize. All right, here we are, the track mode settings. This is going to be the, the fun area. Uh, so we can see here the race preset where we have handling balance 50-50, stability assist zero, regen 100%, drift preset where we have handling balance 100% rear, stability assist negative 10, which is the minimum, and regen is still 100%. And then we have our custom one MPP, where you can actually play around with this stuff. So this is gonna be interesting to see once we can get you guys some data, um, but I can kind of give you an example of how these things work on the Model 3. The handling balance is going to be not necessarily the power distribution all the time, but the power distribution while you're cornering. Um, so there's a basic explanation here just saying if you have it set to the front you can expect more understeer If you have it set to the rear you can expect more oversteer um, It's probably not going to be hundred percent front if you set it like that But that's something we're going to find out and we'll update you guys uh, in a link below on this video uh, And then stability assist. Yes, it says negative 10 that doesn't mean it's off though. It's just minimal. It's minimal, but it's still on. So we found on the Model 3 that it was still too intrusive for the really fast guys, uh, which is one of the reasons we have our party box. Um, but for most people, I would definitely suggest if you're going to the track, starting off here or even somewhere around here uh, and working your way over here. Regenerative braking. Uh, this is going to take the load off your brakes at the expense of battery and motor heat. Um, so if you have stock brakes and you're going out on the track and you want to have some fun, I would definitely leave at 100. Uh, something we found on the Model 3 is that it upped the regenerative uh, braking from 80 kilowatts to over 140. Um, we would expect that the S Plaid is the same, uh, but that's another thing that we'll have to update you on. Uh, another important thing would be the post-drive cooling. Uh, we have a thousand horsepower and that is going to make everything very hot. So if we didn't have post-drive cooling, you'd do your first session and then the rest of your day would just be managing the battery and the motors and it'd be a really bad time. Uh, and then the last thing is brake temperatures. You may have already found this if you were uh, on the track or if you were doing it on the street. I'm going to pretend that you didn't tell me that. But the brake temperature warning comes up and shouts at you that you're overheating them. Um, you're going to want to turn this off if you're on the track, especially if, if you have upgraded brakes because it does not actually have brake temperature sensors, it's modeled. So if you upgrade your brakes and it's yelling at you that your brakes are too hot, it doesn't really know that. So we're gonna see if leaving it off really does leave it off, or maybe there is still going to be some like extreme temperature warning, um, but that's another thing that we'll have to find out. All right, so it's winter here. We have 315 summer tires all around on this car. It would not be a good idea to go out on the road. So instead, we're gonna go out in the parking lot, have a little fun, see what happens with the handling balance on the snow with our uh, summer tires, and uh, you know, just kinda have a good time.
All right, here we have our track mode display for the driver. You got your G circle, got your lap time. You have your peak performance ready here. That one's important. It says that right now because the battery's warmed up, uh, but if it wasn't, it would tell you how long you have. That's important because if the battery isn't warm, it will have more voltage sag and you will have less power. And uh, that's kind of important. That's why you bought the car. To use the lap timer, we're gonna to go to our racetrack. Here we have Mosport, best track in North America, in my opinion. We're going to mark our start finish line and start our lap. Using the built-in GPS of the car, it will know when we cross the line and save that time. And uh, you can come back for your next track day and the next one after and keep comparing. Alrighty, so now I get to show you some of the stuff I was talking about earlier. Uh, the first thing is our 400 millimeter big brake kit. This guy is awesome, it's huge. What do we call that, Jeff? It's called the Easy Big Fella, uh, because this car, you know, speaking nicely, is large. It's big boned, <laughs> so we need something to slow it down. Um, this guy here, it's a bolt on. Um, retains the stock calipers, you can use any pads that you can get for the Model S plaid. Um, and yeah, no crazy modifications required. With some, uh, you know, forced air cooling like brake ducts, this guy should be able to do anything that you can throw at it. Um, what else do we have here? We have our KW competition dampers. Uh, as you can see, we've removed the air suspension, which is not something that's very easy to do. Uh, the car will freak out immediately when it realizes and impose a speed limit. So we had to use our MoTeC uh, ECU and basically, without going into too much detail, uh, make the car forget that it ever had air suspension. Uh, the other thing we have here is our front upper control arm. This was absolutely necessary not only to fit these 315s up front and clear the fenders, but also to get enough front camber uh, to actually handle like it's supposed to. It has shim adjustment for fast and repeatable tuning. Um, we have our infrared brake temperature sensors for the testing that we're doing with the brakes. Um, and you can find some of that really cool data on the actual product page for this brake kit. We also have in the front sealed spherical bearings for all of the control arms. And this made a huge difference for us on the track. Um, it went from feeling like it was kind of wallowing around mid-corner to kind of tight and dialed in and uh, a lot closer to what we expected um, from the car when it came out. Um, definitely a must-have for the track guys, especially when you start putting bigger rubber and stickier tires. You will really notice the deflection of the rubber bushings when you start doing that. So now we'll check out the rear of the car and then uh, have a little peek under the frunk. We're recording. Okay, so in the rear, we have our, not our two-piece rotor. That's because the prototype didn't fit quite right. Uh, obviously, we're revising it again, and uh, the production will be ready very soon. It might even be on the website at this moment. Uh, we also have our KW dampers in the rear. No air suspension at all. Uh, we have our prototype rear brake lines. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video. It's kind of dark there. And uh, we also have suspension arms in the works for the rear. Um, I'm not going to talk about them too much because they're not ready, but they're literally in the mail and we will be sharing those as soon as they are. Up front, we have our brake master cylinder brace. This one was like a must have after the first time we drove the car uh, because I'm sure, as you know, the brake feel is not very good. Uh, the firewall flex is even more than on the Model 3. So uh, we're really excited to hear everyone's feedback on this part. And uh, yeah, hopefully you can see it in the video here. It's kind of hard to show it. It's a little bit dark under here, but um, I think that we'll be listing this on the website any minute now as well. Although it should be said that the brake pad retention clips. Yes, yes, if, okay. If they pull the pad back too much, then 
then we're making a small improvement to a very big problem. So you have to first make sure the pads aren't literally coming off of the rotor. Yeah, that's that's a, a good mention. The uh, the brake pad retaining clips on this car are designed to move the brake pads away from the rotor whenever you're not using the brakes. This makes the efficiency amazing because there's literally zero brake drag, but every time you press the brake pedal, we have to take up that air gap before the pads even touch the rotor. Um, so something that you can do is pop those clips out, give them a little bend just to reduce that pressure it's putting on the pads, and that does also help with your brake feel. Yeah, and you gotta be careful. If you bend them too much, the pads are loose and they start rattling. So yeah. unfortunately, it's a tricky one to get it perfect, but um, we don't want to falsely advertise the match cylinder brace as being this big improvement if the pads are literally away from the rotor. It's, it's yeah. yeah, it can't help with, <laughs> if there's nothing for the hydraulic system to press against. That's true, air, yeah. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, we'll be coming back at you soon with another one on this plaid and uh, we'll even be doing our best to cover the One Lap of America events. Super excited. Uh, make sure to follow Team PGR. We'll link them below. And, uh, you know, like and subscribe if you like our videos. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about our videos. No. Just click, there's a thing here. Click that. No, they want the clickbait. <laughs>